Hey guys, thank you for joining us once again. We are so happy to have you here. But seriously, how happy are we? Always happy. And you know what would make us even more happy is if you would send us some interesting questions on the hotline. That is the most important thing. We need you guys for our show. If you're feeling a little bit nervous, you can do it anonymously. Yes, Um, absolutely. But that's what makes the show go round. We want to be really interactive. So, like, feeling like you guys are in the room with us and that you can have that direct channel of communication with us. We love to chat. That's why we are here. Heartbreakers Hotline. Let's Let's get into some of these really good voicemails that we have. Hello, Elsa. My name is Zach. I was just wondering how to deal with people on the internet who claim to be you asking for money and how I might find or date a girl like you. Thank you. Honestly, you have to only look for verified accounts. And I know that we we actually got one deleted that was a, a fake account that was able to get verified on Twitter, which is so was- crazy. Never from my Instagram or Twitter would I DM people just because the overabundance of yeah. DMs that I would you don't get. Have cash app, you're not telling people. No, to cash no, app you. no, 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 never. Like, unless I never asked for money. A, I mean, to give you a little background, so like her Twitter. Ha- there was a Twitter. The, the fake accounts are really, really, they're really good. Hard to- they're good. They're good. So, like, don't feel bad about it. Yes. I mean, there was a Twitter account with 200,000 followers. That was verified. That was verified by Meta. That was literally, we couldn't even get it taken down. Finally did. I think the only way is to st- stick to strictly only fans, centerfold, fansly. Those are the only way you're truly going to be able to communicate with any stars. There are some Facebooks with 500,000 followers on I know. There and the only you- way you can is to be safe through those things. OnlyFans are valid too because I think they're even making fake OnlyFans. Oh yeah, there was one. We only just got your Elsa Jean back. I know. They stole my exact name. You know what would be a good tell is don't, most of the time though, send money to anything that's not OnlyFans. Yeah. Right? Or 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 in exchange for content, for a custom or... Yeah, yeah, something real that can actually, not just texting because like... Where you're actually receiving you know, not just, hey, meet up with me here. I also don't meet up with fans either. So that for answers the next reason. question. Yeah. Is that you oh, cannot how- date a girl. How to date a girl like you. I think the only way you could date a girl like me would randomly be meeting me mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like trying to get a hold of me online is only exists on OnlyFans. Good note. Yeah. Okay. So you're my manager, but you're also, I love calling you a pop star. Because you are a pop, I am star. a pop star. How long have you been making music and what inspires you to write and create? Definitely my everyday experiences, like, or other people's as well. A lot of it comes from other people's because I'm always watching and listening and like dissecting other people's drama or like relationship stuff. Oh, so I see. That's I what you like to observe mm-hmm. like the world and how everyone is kind of doing their thing in it. And then I take that back. And when I'm placed in the studio and I'm like create something now i'll think about you know the different dynamics people have and how we feel about ourselves or others um so it's a nice little outlet i always loved writing do you write for other people or are you really yes so the first song i ever had out there um which was like kind of what made me do it as a career for a guy named brian mcfadden he was like part of this huge group called westlife in um the uk they're like outsold the beatles huge and they were in australia Um, at the time and I'd showed him a song that I had sang and wrote myself and he decided to take it and release it. So I got my first gold record and it was number two on the charts. I got to see it performed on the live uh, Australia's Got Talent finale. And then I watched it skyrocket up the charts. Chemical Rush by Brian McFadden is the song. Um, and it was released through Universal Music. And yeah, that's what made me feel like a writer because, um, I ended up getting a, well, yeah, it was number two and I got a gold record. How long have you been friends and how did we meet? It's been a couple of years now. Mm-hmm. We met through my Holly at Kitchen Twenty Four in West Hollywood. We were sitting there, and Holly is she was Our saying, "Oh, I love this Elsa. She's mm-hmm. like so great." And blah blah. I think one of the first questions I ever asked you was, "What does it feel like to have all those millions of people following you?" I was just kind of perplexed by it because I was like, "How does that feel? Like all those people just..." I think you were telling me about like 
I, if I take a picture of this drink and then all these guys buy it, I was just yeah. like, wow, this is a whole other world that I've never like experienced before. I remember I had just got my lips injected yes. and they, I was drinking yes. and I was like, my lips are going to fall off if I drink it. Right. Just like but that's the number one thing anyway. they say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how did you start managing me? The charisma and the personality on you. I wasn't ever exposed to the world of like adult entertainers and stuff like that. But to me, I was like, this is so much more than that. Like, there's just something else that I'm like, I think it it added an extra layer that was kind of cool because it's edgy that mm-hmm. you were an adult. The fact as well that it was such a juxtaposing idea, though, that this person that looked so mainstream and sounded so mainstream could also have this Rolling Stone past of, like, being in adult world and also be one of the biggest porn stars in the world, but was only 26 years old. I mean, there was just so many appealing bits that I was like, imagine if I could use that as, like, a case study and, like, I love creating brands and, like, being able mm-hmm. to put the creative pieces together. Like, you're already on your way there. I have tunnel vision when I set my sights on something. Um, but at the same time, I knew you were going to be able to execute the um, brief of what what we needed to get there and that it was going to make a difference for you. So, like, there was no – we got some no's for some magazines. We did. Magazines. That's what we I'm saying, but I did. knew you hounded you them You were not we allowed in a lot of places where I would have liked. I know that you – I think that your confidence in me is what made everybody else so confident that it was going to work. And then they really. all come around in the end anyway. It's they so do. It's so ridiculous because at the end of the day, if you just keep pushing – they end up being like, oh, my God, we love that. And every single person reposts it. Everyone's excited to be there. And when people try and tell you to do it a certain way. and don't you listen. just Yeah, just Stay don't true listen. To yourself, and yeah, sure. exactly. I mean, it's going to be a lot of chatter. How do people get into mainstream world? I would say they have to have something that they actually want to do. I think that maybe finding what what you're actually good at, like it can be anything, but there needs to be something there that makes you come alive because you're going to have to do it repetitiously. You're going to have to do it over and over and over again, whether even if it's like chatting in interviews like Mm -hmm. this, you're going to have to do that so many times. So if you're not good at it, Or if you don't like it even, I mean, you don't have to love it, but like if usually a bit of love. What would you say to somebody? Because, you know, a lot of my friends are like, how do I get James to manage me? And you always say you have to have something (laughs) that you want to do. And a lot of them can't think of something that they want to do. So how do you help someone figure out? Is it just some they're the thing that they're most you passionate just have to in? S- find someone to be around them that can pick the pieces out of them. Because mm-hmm. we're not all walking around thinking about that. But if you have someone trying it's like a therapist. Like so they're drawing out the pieces of information and then and then you get to look at them and go, Oh, I am good at that or oh I do like that. Most people aren't even bringing up the conversation with themselves. So, getting someone that can draw it out of you and be like, do you like this or that? Or like, let's trial and error this. Did that feel good? Or you weren't that great at that? Oh, that's fine. You, you didn't know, love you it anyway. That's a good point. I think yeah. people don't realize that when it comes to the entertainment industry, it's a lot of trial and error. Yes. And majority of the time, I think it is failing well, just to young get young people as well don't exactly know what they are good or not good at or haven't been presented with that challenge yet and uh you'll need to figure that out but most people are just getting by coasting around because they're not thinking about like how do i but if you do want to do something you're going to need to then start to- it comes up and you trial and error things until you find something that you're good at or like do and you then- think majority of people truly love acting and modeling performing or do they love the fame that it could possibly bring them and that is why they're doing it and that's their drive i think that they love both but then i think a lot of people just like they just want the attention and that's why those are the ones that don't become successful because they're not able to do it repetitiously like i said and over and over again and push them push through and take all of the rejection because they don't really love it they just want the end result why haven't you picked up anyone else to manage um because i am a small operation right now so i'm just making sure that i can take you to where it needs to be i mean so i have so many amazing offers with people that want to work with me at the moment but also to expand the management company that would be me um like amazing like gwen even wants to do something okay and she's amazing and i can't even say right now because she works for a massive company that would um, be mad but like so many people want to work and i would level it up to that place but right now i think because i know that you're not going anywhere Mm -hmm. like i can give myself fully to you until i get it to a place where i'm like this is like tick that box that's great i can use that as a use case for the rest of my life like i was able to do this with elsa jean sapphire Hal, and make her this and like really highlight the best parts of her thanks for joining us again call the hotline have a good one bye